Over the next several videos, we're going to be taking a look at creating materials inside of UDK. And I'd like to begin by introducing you to the material editor, and we're going to take a quick walkthrough of the interface. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up the content browser, and I have a material in mind that I wanted to show off. This is M underscore CH Jibs Corrupt Zero One. What this is is a material for an exploded robot part. And the reason we're taking a look at it is because it has some nice animation. If we take a look here at the preview, even in the content browser, uh, we can see how we've got you know, some little flamey, burny parts that are kind of rippling through the material. Now, to get to the material editor, all you have to do is mouse over a material and double-click it. And here we are. Now, the material editor has a pretty simple interface, but it does have a lot of buttons. Let's start off by going over the key areas, though. We have a menu at the very top. Really, this menu is only here to allow you to show and hide different parts of the editor's interface. So you can show or hide the properties window, for example. Down from here, we have a toolbar, and we'll go over all the buttons of the toolbar here in just a moment. In the center on the left, we have a preview window. This is like a 3D viewport that allows you to see the result of your material. It's navigated like so. If we drag with the left mouse button, we can rotate around. If we drag with the right mouse button, we can zoom in, so now we can see this object. And if we drag with middle mouse, we can pan the camera around. A couple of other tricks, too. If you have focus in here, you can hold down the L key, and that allows you to move the light around. Now, I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just moving my mouse. And you see we're kind of sliding the result of our lighting around, which is pretty cool. So that's just a quick look at the preview panel. Now, next to this, we have our expression graph view, and this is where all the magic takes place. This is navigated just like one of the orthographic views inside the main editor. Left mouse will allow you to slide the graph around, so will right mouse, but left and right together allow you to zoom in and out. Now what you're looking at is a series of material expression nodes all wired together to give you your final result. You're going to take things like a texture, in this case, like here's a texture, and we're multiplying it by a value of 60 to brighten it up, and then we're taking that and multiplying it by different numbers. There's a lot of things that go on here, most of which have to do with math. So we're taking the color values of various pixels, we're multiplying them, we're adding together, we're maybe grabbing the square root of them, all sorts of different things we can, we can do, and then plug these into some material channels. We'll talk more about these channels here in just a bit. Now, to the right of this panel, we have the material expressions list. This is essentially all of the different types of nodes we can create. And by nodes, I mean material expressions. You'll just hear me casually drop the term node as I go through here. At the very bottom, we have the properties panel. This is going to be context sensitive. If we select the primary node of the material, this great big long list of channels here, we get a lot of properties. Huge properties window. However, if we grab something simple like a multiply node, we don't really get any properties at all. So it just depends on what you're selecting. So that's the primary areas of the user interface. Now let's talk for just a second about this toolbar. Now starting at the top, we have the home button. What this is going to do is take your primary material node, this great big list of channels you see here, and it'll jump you right to it. So if we're out here in outer space, I can click the home button, and it just takes us right back to where we started. Next to this, we can toggle the grid. So this is really most relevant if we are looking at the preview window. So we can just switch the grid on and off. We can also change the primitive that we're using to preview our material. Currently, we're actually looking at our material applied to a static mesh. In fact, the static mesh that it would actually show on in the game. But we could switch this out to a cylinder if we so desired, or take a look at it on a cube, or on a sphere, or even on a plane. Now, if we want to put it back on a static mesh, all we need to do is select that static mesh in the content browser, and we have use selected static mesh in content browser, which did cause me to skip over a button, and this is finding content browser. All this does is this tracks down the material that you currently have selected. So let's close that. Next, we have clean unused expressions. All of these little floating expression nodes you see here are currently connected into our material. If we were to create one that wasn't connected, say maybe I grab a clamp out of the utility section here and just drag this in. Notice this isn't connected to anybody, and if I click the little skull button, 
it takes that out. It says, hey, you're not connected to anyone. You got to go. Now, moving on, we have show and hide unused connectors. And there are a few of these around. For example, this texture sample has a few unused connectors just kind of floating out here in space. If we click hide, everything that's not connected goes away, which can kind of simplify your view. We'll go ahead and show those again. We can control whether we have curved or straight lines. So if you prefer straight lines as opposed to the kind of curvy ones, you can just toggle those on and off. Now, next we have toggle real-time, well, various toggle real-time buttons. I just wanted to make sure that we had a nice animated material to show these off. So the first one allows us to toggle a real-time material viewport. And as I click this, our little preview window that we're rotating around right now, this goes real time, so we can actually see those little burning sections, you know, smoldering and watch that texture pass along. Now I'm going to switch that off, and let's take a look at toggle real time expression viewport. If I turn this on, all the little tiny sample fields over here inside of our, uh, our main graph view, notice how they're actually moving. So you can see we've got this texture which is slowly sliding around. We also have toggle expression real time preview. This is going to take all of the little real-time buttons here, these little tiny black dots on all of our nodes. It's going to activate them so that any parameter change, if we go in and change a property or anything, that will update immediately. We can see the result right here inside our nodes. So that's a quick look at all of our real-time buttons. Now next to this, we have apply changes to original material and its use in the world. Wow, that tooltip tells you exactly what this does. This is kind of like your accept changes button. If you click this, it's going to save everything you've done out to the material, though you will still need to save your package. Please remember to save your package. Now, we have some fallback material buttons. We can propagate changes to a fallback material, or it'll make a new one. You probably are asking, though, what on earth is a fallback material? Well, not every computer that you're going to send a game out to uh, may be up to date with the required shader models or may not have the latest video drivers. And in such a case where the material you create cannot be rendered for any given reason, it is going to fall back to a simplified version of your material. So that's what a fallback material is. This allows you to propagate those changes to your fallback material, and you can even open up the fallback material in a new window if you want to make changes to it. Now, moving on from here, we can toggle our material statistics. That's these little words up here in the upper left-hand corner of our central panel. You can just turn those on and off. We can also view the source as we connect all of these little material expressions together. What we're actually doing is writing shader script. We're just doing it visually instead of typing out code. But if we want to take a look at the code, we can view it as source. And here it all is. So I'll turn that off. And we also have the ability to search through any of our nodes visible just by typing into the search line. Okay, so that's a quick look at the user interface for the materials editor. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. And when we come back, I want to cover just a few key concepts that you should probably know about materials before we go much further. However, if you want to skip over that video and get right to a hands-on demonstration, I completely understand. Either way, I will catch you in an upcoming video. See you later. Thank you.